I said that we were playing hide and seek. Please we're not playing hide and seek right now because Caleb is a king at hide and seek in this shop because I couldn't even find him. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my shop. My name is Stephen Cox, and I made a video a couple of years ago with that little munchkin over there, my son Ethan. He was about Caleb's height, well, a little shorter. I don't remember how old he was, it was a couple of years ago. But we cut open some oil filters and I got a tremendous amount of feedback from you guys. Well, maybe not some of you guys, but a lot of you guys about the different filters. Video. If you're gonna compare the filter, put up the frame also and cut that thing open. Don't be putting the bottom on. You know better too, because you work on that. You work on stuff. So you know better what you're doing is wrong. You know what I'm saying? You mean it's like you got no honor, no dignity. You know I mean all you care about is, is making money. It means bull and there is one particular oil filter that I cannot stand, and every time I see it on any engine out there, it's always a red flag. The only thing that I will ever use that oil filter for is maybe. I won't even use them to break in an engine, honestly. Some guys will use them to break in motors. I won't use them to break in. I will only use it if there's a sludge problem in the engine and I just need some cheap oil filters. But we're going to cut open a couple of these filters. Now, all of these are for a Ford 7.3 liter diesel power stroke engine. So we have a, from left to right, a Fram Extra Guard, a Fram Ultra Synthetic, a Ford Motorcraft, FL 1995, this is a factory filter, a Wix XP, a Wix filter, a Wix XP, and a Napa Gold. Now I set these up because I wanted to show you guys the cost difference of each one. Now you can tell that the Fram Extra Guard is probably one of the cheapest filters out there. Now all of these numbers are based off what I found on Amazon or Google right now. If you go to a parts store, these prices are going to be extravagantly different. So don't walk into AutoZone or Rallys and be like, well, this guy's video, he said, he said this, this one's only $10 and they're charging $40 for it. Yeah, exactly right. You can get a Motorcraft filter off Amazon for 10 bucks. These are what I run in all seven threes. But I bought a little tool, a little filter cutter opener, about a $50 tool. I'm going to try this thing out. If you guys want to purchase one of these, there'll be a link down in. The description. The description for Amazon. If you buy this off of Amazon for your own good, to cut your own filters apart and do some inspections and whatnot, which I highly encourage you guys to do, which I'm gonna get into in the next couple of months, buy you this tool, cut your filter in half, take it apart, look at it like I'm going to with these filters, be a fantastic tool. If you do buy this off Amazon, it does help out the channel a little bit. I get a little residual from that sale. It does not mark this thing up. It just provides you a link, and because I drove you over to Amazon, you purchased that link, I got like five to seven percent of that sale. And the cool thing about it is if you want to help out the channel, if you do that with my Amazon links in any video before you buy something to Amazon, doesn't matter if you buy this and you buy that big screen TV or that seven thousand dollar generator you've been eyeballing because you know you need that generator. I'll still get the same residual off anything you buy from that link, and I really, really appreciate it. It helps out the channel a lot. So we are going to set these filters up and I'm gonna use some free labor and make my son to do it. No, um, it we're gonna start with cutting the frame and work our way up to the most expensive one. Now I am not doing a 100% this is everything you ever needed to know about an oil filter. Let's put it underneath the microscope and let's compare it to everything else out there. I'm not doing that guys. I'm just showing you how you can get really, really high quality oil filters for a lot cheaper than you normally can at parts stores. But if you're in a bond and have to use a parts store, there's one particular company that I do not like. I don't want you to use that filter. I want you to make your own assessment. I'm just gonna cut these filters apart and you be the judge. Bam, ripper open. Smash. So, we have a uh, very, very odd color of orange. It looks pretty. It is a nice color of that orange construction, orange, orangish, whatever. What's it smell like? It smells like trash. Trash, okay, let's see if it's trash. So, very, very simple setup. I'm gonna show my sons. 
all you do, unscrew this. Now guys, the, the reason you want to do this, and I'm, I don't have a used oil filter to cut apart and show you, but on equipment, specifically on equipment, when you pull a hydraulic filter out, you should always cut the tops off. You should always cut your oil filters apart, or your, excuse me. You should always cut your hydraulic filters apart, your strainers apart, and inspect them. You should also cut your fuel filters apart um, if they're cartridge style ones. Oil is not usually that big of a deal. If you just rebuilt an engine, then yeah, go ahead. But I don't think it's as necessary. Um, it still helps with diagnosing. So if you have a million dollar machine, you pull an oil filter off of it, go ahead and cut the filter uh, material, material apart and look at it and then inspect it. But you can tell we have a little cutter there. Let's run that cutter. And just a little bit of pressure. If you crank down on this thing, you're gonna mess it up. Look at that little bitty threaded rod. I know a lot of you guys suffer from the uh, smaller rod syndrome on things. And um, you just gotta be easy with it. You gotta. Kind of finesse it. But you make a little turn like that and you can tell how it's marking. Kind of see that. But I'm gonna let Caleb do it. Really Alright Caleb, you're gonna turn tighten this about a quarter turn. Alright, now spin it around. Which way? Anyway, doesn't matter. Ah. Do it again. All right, now tighten it a quarter turn again. There you go, do it again. Quarter turn? Mm-hmm. Give me a big muscles. Don't forget it. Oh, oh, oh. And there you go, we got the top off. Ha! So we have our first filter cut apart. We're gonna go ahead and cut the rest of these filters apart get all the contents of all the filters laid out on the concrete shop floor because it's the biggest area that I have and show you guys a comparison of all the components and the differences between these filters and let y'all be the judge. And I will give y'all my two cents about which one of these filters that I cannot stand. I'm sure if you've been watching my channel for a while, you already know which ones I can't stand, but we're gonna get that done off camera and get the, uh, the Vajayo set back up and party till we can't. Dad, I didn't like unicorns. Love unicorns. So you can tell we got all of our housings cut off, all of our filters. Now we need to cut apart our cartridges. We're just going to use a chop saw for that real quick. And we're going to spread this pleat material out on the ground and show you the difference between each manufacturer. So we got those all cut apart and like I said earlier guys, I'm not gonna go over every single little particular difference in all the filters because I am not an engineer and I don't really care to have that much time invested in this project, honestly. But I will show you guys a couple of the things that are main, no, drastically different between the filters. Now I don't have one of the filters. I'm gonna um, show you some footage from one of the other, the worst filters on the planet that I've ever seen. But let's go ahead and go over these and show you what you're getting. So as you can tell, every single filter pretty much looks the same. I'm gonna use this Napa Gold as an example to show you guys. So here's what you're looking at. You have your top cap that holds your O-ring. You cut the top off. That top cap is usually pretty thick, about a half inch thick still. You got a little valve in here. Now this is just to seal this to the top. This is not an anti-drain back valve. A lot of people will think it is, but it's not. Um, if you're curious what that is, I'll show you here in a second. Then you have this entire section that comes out on its own that's usually together. And we'll call this the cartridge. You have a little spring on the bottom of the cartridge and all this is doing is forcing this cartridge against this head like this. So it's just shoving it. What this does, 
is if you go too long on an oil change or you get something in your oil filter and it clogs up, oil will actually go through around this little area. It'll push this cartridge down out of the way and oil will actually filter and recycle in your engine rather than just going to a plugged up style filter. So they call this a bypass style oil filter. So the spring on the bottom provides pressure pushing up on this cartridge to where when oil goes on the outside and it comes through out here, goes through the center, and then or the oil goes through these outer holes down through this filter material up through the center and to your engine. And all that allowed it to do with that spring on the bottom was push this entire assembly down a little bit and let oil kind of bypass the cartridge filter. That way, if you go, you know, seven, eight years on one oil change, like a lot of 7.3 owners, um, it'll still get lubrication in oil, just not filtered oil. Uh, pretty much all of their construction is going to be the same. Now, Wix uses the actual spring on the bottom. It's a really, really heavy duty, nice spring. There's a couple other different ways they um, accomplish the same goal, but I'll just go over the general construction of one filter and then we'll talk about all the different. We have our cartridge set up that I cut the end cap on. The end caps are usually the same. Now Fram on their cheaper stuff, they actually just hot glue pieces of cardboard to the top and hot glue a piece to the bottom. And they kind of glue the edges together sometimes on the filters. Sometimes they don't even bother to do that and I sell it in a box. The spring on the bottom would be a piece of flat steel and they're just really, really constructed very poorly. But you got our top cap, our filter material actually does the filtering. Got a little center section in there with a bunch of perforated holes in it. It keeps the uh, filter material from going through it. Then you have your actual filter media, is what they call this stuff. Generally, most manufacturers will just glue the ends together like wicks. Um, I have hardly ever found one of these glue joints like this broken apart from a Wix filter. But that's how it comes apart, kind of accordions out. So I'm going to do that with the rest of these. We're going to stretch them out. We're going to show which one of these has more pleated filter material inside of it as far as the length of everything. And I'll show you some construction of the ones from Wix and Napa, which Wix makes the Napa Gold, Napa oil filters versus how Fram decides to do some of theirs, which I don't necessarily agree with. So this is just a normal Wix filter. Looks just like the Napa Gold filter, same kind of material. It's glued in the center, exactly like the other one is from a Napa. Pull that apart. Now this one is the Ford Motocraft FL 1995. Has a little piece of string around the filter grid material. I don't know why. Um, looks a lot like that Wix um, filter material. I don't know what kind this is. Now they've decided to use a small little metal clamp on the end as well as adhesive on this one um, to secure the edges. Or excuse me. No, they just use one solid metal clip. It goes back all the way. And this is the Fram Ultra Synthetic. Looks a lot like the Wix filter, same kind of filter material. It's uh, glued together this time instead of, there's no metal you know, holding it, but seems to be okay strength wise. Really prefer to have a metal clip on that. And last but not least is our Fram Extra Guard which is the same kind of filter material in the other ones. They're using a um, little clip, just like on the, um, whichever one that was, I forget which one had a metal clip on it. And other than me mangling it with the uh, first saw attempt. And this is what you're in, you end up with. So the Fram actually has the longest piece uh, filter material. Um, the two white pieces are the synthetic filters, which are a different kind of media, different... It's a different kind of filter media that's a lot thicker than the paper ones and supposedly supposed to last longer. And then the other three have the similar type of paper filter that pretty much everybody has. So just looking at it, 
Um, obviously, in my opinion, the synthetic ones, the Fram synthetic and the Wix synthetic are going to be the best ones just because the actual thickness of this material makes a difference. At least in my opinion, it does. Thicker material will hold a lot more um, grip in it than thinner material will. If you got this uh, paper material like this, it's literally just paper thin. It does have some thickness to it, but all in all, as far as the actual media in the filters themselves, I've never had a problem with how Fram or anybody else uses the media. Um, media is only as good as the owner's ability to do the oil changes on time. Uh, there's not a media out there that'll let you just stick this thing on your engine and never have to change the oil again and just be perfect, protect your engine the whole time. It doesn't work like that. So they all have these uh, little anti, uh, these little seals. The Motorcraft and all the wicks have a hard plastic seal. Feels like a really nice unit. The Fram filter uses a, uh, like a piece of silicone or something to seal theirs. Both the Frams, they use an actual coil spring. Feels fine. The Ford uses this metal, I don't know, it's got like a little, cone shape to it to seal and then both of the wixes use a pretty heavy duty spring now on the uh, Fram Ultra and the Motorcraft so you can tell a difference in between some of these this is the Fram it's just a straight cut or square cut o-ring this is more of a d-shaped o-ring with the top of it having a um, little bit of a chamfer to it same thing with this one has a little bit of a chamfer to it but none of the Wix oil filter seals have any chamfers to them. I don't think you really need the chamfer on the outside. I don't understand why filters have that. It doesn't make any sense to me. I guess once it deforms enough, it'll seal on the inside. Maybe provide some, a little more pressure on the inside. Or sorry, some engineer sitting around figuring that stuff up. So that is it for the actual inside of these filters. Now my two cents on filters, having cut apart hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of filters, is that any filter that has synthetic, um, a synthetic media like the Fram Ultra or the Wix XP is probably going to do a really, really good job for you. And no, a synthetic oil filter does not mean that you have to run a synthetic oil filter for synthetic oil. There's no, get that out of y'all's heads. That has nothing to do with it. All it's talking about, the paper material on the ground, the brown stuff, is organic material from my understanding it's a filter media that is designed to break down eventually i think and the synthetic media will never break down it's about plastic it'll just get kind of clogged up but it won't deteriorate um which is good for your engine not so good for the landfills but i think the wix xp and the fram ultra gar uh, ultra synthetic are probably both pretty comparable filters now, if I was going to pick between the two, I'm always going to pick with Wix because I do not like the way Fram does a lot of their filters. Fram, for a long time, especially back in the 80s and 90s, shortcutted a tremendous amount on their filters. I'll go ahead and show you some footage from one of the filters I cut apart years ago with my sons. And if you look, this top cap is just super glued on to the filter media, and then the bottom is just super glued on to it. This does not make a very good design in my opinion. Now I am not an engineer. Um, so with that being said, I might be completely off base, might be a fantastic system that works perfectly on every single test bench that you ever put it on. From my experience, it looks cheap as hell. It looks cheap as crap. It looks like it's the absolute cheapest way that you can manufacture an oil filter and sort of get away with manufacturing it and still be able to sell a product. Um, so because Fram decides to do that with their cheaper filters, I will never buy Fram filters and put them on anything, any customer's vehicle, any machine or anything that I have that needs an oil or oil filter, it will never get a Fram filter. The only way I'll ever do that is if a customer specifically wants their whatever Fram filter put on there, then I will gladly appease my customer and warn them, I don't like these, but it's your car, your truck, your machine, whatever, don't care, I'll put it on your stuff. The Motorcraft filter, you know, it works pretty good, but cutting that apart, that's the first Motorcraft one. That's the first Motorcraft filter I've actually cut apart. I'm really actually not a good fan of that, their setup. 
it's a perfectly great filter but that bypass valve on the bottom that sheet metal is the only detractor from it other than it not being synthetic filter material now remember from a customer standpoint a buttercraft filter can be bought for as cheap as 10 bucks that winx xp is going to be a 33 dollar filter the napa gold is going to be a 30 dollar filter uh the cheap the most expensive fram on here is going to be 13 bucks and it's probably priced accordingly um it's not that bad of a filter so from going forward i'm probably actually going to switch i'm not going to put napa or wix filters on 7.3s anymore i'm going to stick to what i uh, originally done that's just motorcraft filters and if a customer wants it i will put a fram ultra synthetic on but again i'm not giving the company any money that comes out with subpar products to the point where it costs you guys money that's it for the oil filter video guys if you want to get your own tool this tool worked really really well once i figured out how to use it one take this <clears throat> stop burping take the seal out of the top of the filter that way when this thing rides on here it actually fits perfectly flat with that top that piece of rubber will let it kind of move around and it'll get in a bind um, if you want to buy one of these you're about 50 60 bucks it'll be linked down in the description if you want to purchase any of these filters they will all be down in the description if you're going to buy one for your ford 73 i highly recommend the ford motocraft fl 1995 it's a fantastic filter it's cheap if you buy them on amazon if you go to o'reilly's autozone pet boys uh, any of those other like big box auto stores they mark them up tremendously you can get a case of those motor motocraft filters for like 100 bucks 12 to a case or you can get you a couple of wix 33 dollars filters i really wish the wix wasn't as expensive because i really really like wix filters and i've always put them on everything but man cutting these things apart and showing the difference that's just tremendous of i can't believe there's three times the cost of what fram and motorcraft are getting for theirs it's just crazy anyway guys i hope you liked the video hit the like button hit the subscribe button buy the tool or go over to the amazon link buy anything you want help out the channel it helps the kids out because when y'all buy stuff off the amazon i get a little money and then i can buy more beer to drink in front of the kids right no ah. all right guys hit the like button hit the subscribe button and get out and fix something